Hey, mate. So, I read this book. Classic. Hello from the Popcusters, it is I, Aaron Popcuster, and today I got this awesome book of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, himself winner of the Nobel Literature Prize. And well, let's get right on to it. So, plot's pretty simple. There's a mentally disabled guy named Lenny, who's extremely big, basically the Hulk when it comes to brute strength, but he has the mind of a small child. And there's George, who's little but quick and witty. And basically what happens is George and Lenny, they're traveling together, they have been traveling together for a while. And they go they got a new job, so they go to the ranch to for this new job. And um, Lenny basically has the mind of a small child. So sometimes he does things without thinking about it. Like for example grabbing at soft velvet when it's on, on a woman and she went she said, Oh, he's raping me, but obviously all he wanted to do is touch the soft velvet because he just likes touching soft things. Which is, you know, understandable because I, I like touching soft things. Soft things are very, very cool. However, that becomes a problem when you're touching soft things that's on top on, of another person. So, yeah. Then, of course, on the ranch, they have a little bit of uh, running with this guy named... Uh, he's such a bad character that I already forgot his name. <laughs> Wait, give me a second. Curly? I think it's Curly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this guy, this really annoying guy named Curly just comes up to him and and basically wails on him because everyone's making fun of him. And Lenny takes a lot of hits on his face, sort of like me. That was, for legal purposes, that was a joke. But, um, I might tell you later about what actually happened. Not. Anyways. Anyways, moving on. So, but, however, Lenny has really brute strength and George just goes, okay, stop him. And he literally grabs his hand and crushes it because he's, he's the Hulk, dude. If you give him a break, I bet he could just break it with his bare hands, man. He just broke someone's hand by, by squeezing it. What the? Anyways, moving on. So, basically, Lenny, Lenny does that and Curly stays away from them. And basically, Lenny and George, they have this dream. This dream about a little house all to themselves, a rabbit hutch, a bunch of berry batch, and they, they sell eggs, and they live happily ever after. Other words, the American dream. So we can guess, oh, this guy won a prize for this book, because this book literally embodies the idea of the American dream. Plus, you know, disabilities. Disabilities always get prizes. That, for legal purposes, that was also a joke. Anyways, moving on. So... Um, yeah, so anyways, this goes on and they, they talk about it and they think, okay, this other guy named Candy, he's, he's this old guy with a little bit of savings, together they could probably get a little bit of land, a, li a little house, and perhaps they could really accomplish the American dream. Which is, you know, it's pleasant to think about your future house, like, oh, I'm gonna be super rich and buy a mansion, mate, that's great, or something like that. But these guys, you know, they just want some good cottage. Was, was in the garden and some some animals that's that's all they want and basically they just okay yeah and they can do it if, if they just work for a little bit more but of course if, if you if you've read if you've read even like two books of this guy that doesn't work out very well for him why because well you see the, the, there's this girl and she her freaking, she's Curly's wife, except she doesn't love Curly, she just lo she just married him for basically money. And she goes up to Lenny and messes with him for a bit, and then she tells Lenny to touch her hair, and Lenny does touch her hair. Then she accidentally kills her, and then he accidentally kills her, because she starts screaming because Lenny wouldn't let go, and... Lenny doesn't want her to scream and basically just accidentally twists her neck and kills her. Yeah, sucks to be way too strong, it doesn't it? Doesn't it, right? You know? And then, you know, Lenny... And then Lenny runs away, and George and the other people try to hunt him down. And George goes up to him, talks about the American dream for a little bit more, then shoots Lenny back in the head, and GG, book over. Now, the way I put it makes it sound funny, but it really isn't. It's really unfortunate, and I feel really, really sorry for Lenny. 
And some of the themes, like I already said multiple times, the American dream. You know, the dream that I can own a little bit of land, have some chicken, have a couple pigs, have a couple rabbits, and live a happy life on my land. That is the American dream. And freedom of opportunity for everyone, of course. But, you know, things really don't work out that well, and that doesn't happen. But still, this book does embody the essence of the American dream. And also, it has some bits about companionship, you know, like like Lenny and George sticks together until the end, even though Lenny basically is a huge dragon George, because George is a smart man, he can probably take care of himself better if Lenny, the big Dumbo three-year-old in the body of a Hulk, wasn't around him. And then, of course, at the end, George actually shoots Lenny, but that's actually for his own good, because he wants Lenny to live, die a painless death. And Lenny, well, yeah, and I feel really sorry for Lenny, because the, the poor dude didn't know what was going on, what was he supposed to do? Although, to be fair, he's a danger to society and himself, so... If, if, if this is based in the 21st century, he would be locked in a mental uh, facility. He would be locked in a facility. But still, dude, he's a nice guy. He, he just wants to touch soft things, mate. I mean, who doesn't? I love soft things. We aren't going to talk about the obscene amount of stuffed animals in my room. For legal reasons, I wasn't kidding. Anyways, so, yeah. So anyways, that, those are some of the things of the book. And I feel like, let's think about how George felt after he had to kill Lenny. George, ra George got away with one of the other guys to sins to get a drink. But George just, just, uh, it just sucks for him because he has this immense guilt. Like, he's been taking care of this guy for a long time and he loves him. But unfortunately, he had to kill him because, you know, the other guys were going to kill him anyway. So he, like, he wanted to end it himself probably so that you know, he wouldn't feel as much pain as someone shooting in the guts. So he did a headshot, so he, he didn't know what was happening, and he just died without any pain. So, I, I feel like, at the end, you can't judge George, like, Oh my god, he shot his friend, what the heck? No, 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 no. George put his friend out of his misery, and I think, in this sense, George did a good job preserving their friendship. And that's all, basically it of what I have to say about this book. Couple other, couple extra things is scene building, excellent. And all the dialogue in here is complete. That 18th century, JK, that 19th century, like Western, that, you know, you know, that weird, okay, let me just, um, it's like, it's like a combination of like this old Western drawl and, um, and modern language, so. Sometimes, sometimes it's a bit confusing to read, but you know, you get the gist of it, because you know, like, George, how long is it gonna be till we get that little place and live on a fat of the land and rabbits? You can understand it, you know what they mean, but, you know, it's a bit confusing sometimes. And I feel like John Steinbeck did an excellent job implementing those parts into the novel, and also his theme building is excellent. And his writing is really immersive, even though I don't like this kind of story, I found myself getting pulled in. But again, this book is only 100 pages long, so uh, it wasn't much of a problem reading it. But anyways, all in all, I would say this book has a really nice message, and I, I wouldn't like highly recommend it, because you know it's a fun read, but it has a good moral lesson in there. And also, if you, if you like this sort of book, then we'll go ahead and enjoy. But don't expect action, it's... It's, it's, it's a thematic, more theme-based run book than plot and action and all that. If you want that, read my book when it comes down. Wink, wink. Anyways, like always, your plot coaster, Aaron the plot coaster. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. And see you in the Wild West. Just kidding, that isn't the right age, but still, you know, Wild West sounds cool. Whatever, goodbye.